Hello and welcome everyone. It is Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, February 5th, and I'm um, doing this recording a little bit later than normal, but uh, as it is right now, it is the beginning of the second half for the Giants are up beating New England, so we'll see how this thing all plays out. Don't forget, commercials are more funnier than ever during, uh, usually, there's a big uh, media push. A lot of the... Uh, uh, financial media will probably be dissecting the top and the worst, most important, effective commercial. I think they're funny. I, it doesn't want to make me buy a, a a Chevy or Doritos or drink more Budweiser, but they're humorous. But uh, if they think they're effective to most consumers, then I guess it's um, brand loyalty that really matters. As far as the markets are concerned, though, looking at the S&Ps last week, we did make another weekly higher closing high, meaning we closed last week above the prior week's high. Looking at advanced decline on the overall New York Stock Exchange, notice that back in July when we had our peak high, and I'll just draw that in right here, um, we're just tapping into those July highs right now. But if we go back in time and we say, well, what about the May high, which is over here, looking at advanced decline we certainly have surpassed both the uh, May high and the July high in advanced decline meaning more stocks up than um, stocks are down but this little rally what I'm got a little bit of concern with is that this little rally that we've had for the last say six weeks one two three four five six all right make it seven since we had this buy signal has been on relatively mild volume the on balance volume indicator is nowhere near, let alone its July high, um, but its uh, March high of last year when the market was attempting to make these uh, peak highs, and again, even the um, May high. So, as I'm pointing out to you right there. So, we've seen the market in prior times when it does rally like this, it generally should be accompanied by a breakout of these old highs along with the advanced decline. So that's a little bit of concern for me. The seasonal tendency, as you can see right now, I've got the seasonal trend. From right now at this point in time, we generally see weakness. Now we're holding some put options right now, and I wanted to get out of these, but I'm going to give it another couple of days. I mean, there's just, you know, I think we can get something better out of them than liquidating here. I think we have maybe one or two more days, and we could absolutely see this market pull back, and it could pull back hard, I'm not going to tell you it's going to 12.57, but at least we could see maybe 12.83 one more time. I think from wherever the high is, this market could come back, and I make that uh, assumption based on that volume right there, and in addition to that, the fact that this has had a very aggressive move in the advanced decline line without any type of meaningful correction. So I think that we are due for maybe a two, three week pullback before beginning uh, continuation higher if that is what we are going to do. So long term, I must tell you, as far as a long term trader, and I mean going out, I am fairly bullish. We have a monthly buy signal, but generally we get a monthly buy signal. We should see a pause or at least regression in the means. And if, if you think about this for a second, if we get a pullback to the midpoint of the range of the real body of last month, that would be approximately right here and that's around 1289. So I think perhaps we should get a pullback and then as we catch up to the moving averages catch up, we should see support between 1290, let's call it, and 1275 or so. So that's my, I think this old high right in here will help support the market, but the midpoint of this range of the real bottom, if we do get a pullback, it should be fairly early in the month, which is this week. So I would say let's look for maybe a little bit higher opening coming into uh, this week. So Monday, maybe we get just a little bit more push testing up into that 1350 area. And then uh, maybe we get just shy of 1369 as the monthly R R2 because it's a bullish outlook. But just shy of that, somewhere up in here between 50 and, and, and 69. So you know, go 13.59. Let's call it the midpoint of that area. I think somewhere right around in this area, 13.55, we've got a shot of seeing a market pull down. 13.50 is going to be a big psychological area. 
and that's what I'm looking for, and then we'll get out of these puts. Perhaps I'm even looking if we get a good intraday one hour on an hourly uh, basis, look at uh, buying some March put options and roll out into March. And I would be looking for a 60-minute sell signal, something that would have to be substantial in, in both um, – like a low close doji but also as far as a rally if you notice after the monthly unemployment report came out we really had a hard time doing nothing there was a very minimal range i mean literally it was like less than about two and a half three points for four hours it just didn't do anything didn't give you a chance to really day trade on friday but i think we're going to see a return looking at the uh the weekly pivot i don't think we're going to have a shot of getting up here but folks i got up in here, I think it's time to start looking at some puts. And the reason I say that is because the market just, quite frankly, this lack of volume on this follow-through is a little bit scary. So if I was bullish, I'd be tightening up my stops. I'd be looking to take some profits on longs. In fact, our sister uh, publication, PA Stock Alerts, is exactly what we're doing. So just thought I'd mention that to you. All right, looking at crude oil. Crude oil hit monthly support. We come into a seasonal time frame where we want to be a buyer, but I think this year might be a little bit later in in the season or later in the, in the month. I'm I'm going to probably be later on this than early. I, even though we're at monthly pivot support, I'd like to see a bona fide buy signal in here. Uh, looking at another avenue, the crack spread. What the crack spread is, and I'll show it to you, is you take a difference between the... Uh, Rebob, reformulated blend gasoline and heating oil, and subtract that from the price of crude oil. And so the crack spread typically starts to bottom out in February. Look at this. This thing's just a monster. It's been going up. Let me take a look at the uh, overall pattern from a longer term perspective for you. Yes, it's gone up, but folks, generally we typically see that crack spread starting like. January or so, like the beginning of February, like it did back in 07. We did get an early start to the year here in uh, 2008. And then, of course, uh, by 2009 in March, the thing started all over again. Back in 2010, it started in February. But this time, this year, it started in November, a little bit earlier. So I don't know if that's a maybe a sign that the economy is a little bit stronger and it started to pick up by looking at the crack spread, demand for uh, gasoline and heating oil. Remember, heating oil also, it, from a refinery standpoint, competes with diesel fuel. So perhaps um, looking at diesel fuel and gasoline and heating oil and jet fuel, all transportation-type fuels, also start to work in on that crack spread. So as, as it starts to widen or become more positive, it's um, definitely more of a bullish indication for not only the economy, but um, I think it's kind of played itself out here. And so I'm a little bit leery of buying crude oil from um, a seasonal standpoint right now because I think towards later in the month we might see another little pullback. So this was interesting. I thought I'd just show you about the crack spread big mover here looking at other markets gold and uh, generates a daily sell signal uh, last sell signal almost every sell signal does result in some meaningful uh, corrections along the way so I'm not going to be bullish on the gold market right now from a weekly standpoint look what kind of uh, not quite a doji formation missed it but a spinning top nonetheless and this shows a potential weakness now look down below and see what the seasonal trend does it starts to weaken right now so this rally may have just petered out another market and we're going to take a look at silver real quick all right silver did not generate a sell signal but it did form a equal and opposite a tweezer top equal and opposite equal in range from real body opposite in color green and red kind of a, a bearish pattern and typically silver doesn't quite peak out until about the middle of the month towards the end of the month and then after that then we start to see the decline here I'll show you what I'm talking about so between the end to the beginning of March that's when we see silver typically decline that's kind of interesting because that's kind of what the charts are showing us, right? It looks like because we have a sell signal in gold, 
Note we do not have a sell signal in silver. So to me, it does look like the seasonal weakness shows up and is showing up in gold before. And there's the sell signals I mentioned with gold. So we'll be looking at that. Live cattle. Now, on a daily basis, we generated a sell signal with kind of a double top or an M top pattern. One, two, three. And we close below this low we should see some weakness in cattle prices as we get into maybe the middle of the month I want to start looking at buying the April cattle and selling the June as a spread we want to see the spread get to like even money maybe 10 20 cents under and then we're going to be looking at buying cattle but we'll do it by means of a bull spread so we'll look for a little bit cheaper prices in the cattle soybeans generated a buy signal last week missed it pulled right back into our moving averages from a weekly perspective uh, we've been in a weekly buy I think we clear and need to hurdle above these old peaks that I'm drawing in here and then we have probably uh, about a dollar two dollars to the upside so we'll be looking at buying some soybeans this week sugar starts its um, kind of stall pattern in here we're still in a sell mode but boy that that engulfing pattern sure is formidable here so we're gonna stay out of the sugar market for this week back to equities oh one market I forgot and I know we're all kinda of concerned with would be two markets actually the euro currency and the euro currency is sort of stalling in here on a daily chart not going anywhere we're forming a a little bit of a range and so with these spinning tops as you can see small ranged almost a uh, kind of re resemblance of dojis I would look for any close above here we're gonna probably take out one and test up to 134 I've got my eye on this because this volume pattern here is indication that this market is in a mixed stall pattern so watch for breakouts and that's what I'll be keeping my eye on this week bonds incidentally big sell but you know what Boy, they've they just really been a tough trade. If anything, all they do is grind kind of sideways. They get you all excited of that they're they're finally gonna make that that move to the downside like they did back here in October, and then it's straight up to the races. So more sideways action. Can't trust this market till you take out and I'm gonna tell you right now, around one forty and a half. That's the number we need. Look at this. Every time it traded, it never closed below that level. So you, you really, the last time, I think even back here, uh, the market closed at 140.13 back on um, November 9th. After that, really hasn't seen a close below 140.5. So keep your eye on that. If that breaks below 140.5, that's, that's a different story. Seasonally speaking, we remain in a uh, decline. So this could be the time. We're in a sell signal. We just kind of uh, got a lot of people spooked on last week's move with that little pop but then I think the unemployment report definitely came right back and put everyone in line so we're back on to the defensive for the bond market and we'll be looking at perhaps any type of rally up here around 143 or so 144 and uh, see if we can get some more mileage from this sell signal that's all the time I have for tonight I hope that information found you uh, well and useful and don't forget Monday morning planning and scanning in the trading room everyone hope your favorite team wins have a great evening thank you